Welcome to the Blender Goon. In this video, I'm going to make this tree. Uh, I've had a few requests on how to make a tree, so I threw this guy together just to show the steps. Okay, let's get started on our tree. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, hit Shift A, Mesh, and we're going to do a cylinder. And we're going to lower this cylinder down to uh, five segments. Because if we shade smooth this, this should give us a fairly nice looking tree. And go into edit mode. And we're just going to extend this guy up. I'm going to hit PZ and move it up. Actually, before I do that, let's stay back in uh, object mode. And we're going to do GZ1. Bring it to the bottom there. Now we go into edit mode. And hit GZ and move it up. And we'll scale this down a little bit. Maybe scale our bottom out a little bit. Yeah, before we scale it out, let's add a loop cut. That way we can kind of flare it at the bottom a little better. Something like that. And that gives us a pretty decent base shape for our tree. Uh, I'm actually going to grab this and extrude it again. Up and scale it down some more. Now we can add loop cuts in here to add us to actually give us some offshoots. Uh, so I'm going to add a loop cut here, bring it up, grab this face, and I'm just going to hold control and click it and scale it down and hold control and go up that way and scale it down. That gives us a decent looking shape there. Add another loop cut here, move it down, maybe grab this face. Uh, angle it kind of like that, and we'll shoot it up this way, scale it down. We could have scaled that down first, but it's okay. Uh, let me scale it back up a hair, and I'm going to give it one more up that way and scale it down. Go ahead and grab this one. Shoot it out this way and scale it down. Maybe rotate it. And then fire it up that way. And then I think I want a couple more up here. So I'm going to grab that one. Hit that face. Shoot it out this way. Scale it down. And if this is too big, we can uh, move that loop cut up. And then grab that face and shoot it out this way. Maybe rotate it, grab it, and pull it up a little bit. Maybe add another loop cut here. Grab that one and pull it down a little bit. Scale it a little. And then grab this face and scale it a little. And just give ourselves some uh, I do that. There we go. I think I'm going to add another branch like right here. So I'm going to get another loop cut. Move it up to about there. Grab that face. And turn it sideways. And Pull it out like that and scale it down, rotate it, scale it down, and then we can start making other branches off like this. And if this stuff gets too big, like that was way too big, we can back it up and just grab the loop cut, hit GG, and just slide it down, and then grab the face. Maybe back that up a little bit. That doesn't look bad. And if you want to, you can you can always grab these loop cuts and move them 
to give them a little more uh, angles. And then if we take this tree and go back into object mode and right click shade smooth, it kind of rounds the tree off a little bit. Even though it's blocky, the uh, shade smooth makes it look pretty good. So I don't like the shape of some of these guys, uh, so I'm going to shorten some of them up. So back in edit mode, I'm going to grab this one and just kind of move it up. And this one also. Give some more of these guys. Uh, if you hold Alt, you can click and grab the loop. I'm just gonna, yeah, you know what? Trying to make it, make it look nice. I'm gonna GG and move, slide that one up just to make sure it's straight. And then on these bottom ones, we can grab the face and we can do an extrude and a scale. And it's getting crazy down here. We can just grab it and move it down. And maybe scale it some more. It's not too bad looking. And then I'm going to extrude it again. And scale it down. And move it down. And just give yourself, uh, you know, some... root systems This one to come back out a little bit like that. I want this one to come down. And you can move these by the by the vertex or by the edge loop or however you want to move move them to make them look good. And I want another one here, so I'm going to grab this face and uh, do I want to do it that way? Yeah, I'll just extrude it and then move these edges to where they look good. And then I can grab that face and pull it out. If you need to, you can add another loop cut in here. That's the nice thing about working with quads, is you can add loop cuts easy. See if I can grab the right edge. Something like that. And if you wanted, you could add a couple more. Uh, I'm actually going to leave it be. Because it's not looking horrible like that. Maybe one more right here. And a small one here. It's 
pretty good. Now I'm going to go into x-ray mode, hit 1, and try to select the bottom of all these things. That's going to be more difficult than I thought. <laughs> probably just select the whole edge loop but that's got them all and did I get them all yeah and then just do SZ zero and that'll bring them all to there and maybe grab these ones and move them down those ones too. And just give yourself a, a nice shape that you like. I'm going to turn this to vertex because I'm going to snap these back to the bottom. Use the control and then touch the bottom and it'll straighten them out again. So I noticed I caught two more uh, vertex there so I'm going to grab that vertex and that vertex and hit GZ. And if you click, a little selection uh, stuff for you, if you click above uh, what you want or to the side of what you want, you don't have to click on a vertex to select it. You can actually click close to it, which helps when you have stuff like this. So if I select close to that and then hit shift and select close to that one, it's going to grab the top vertex. And I'm just going to move those about there. And then I'm going to start selecting these loops again because I want to make it longer. Um, That's how I should have done it the first time. There, I got them all. And I'm just going to hit GZ and move them down because in Second Life we're going to need to stuff it in the ground so now we got enough room if the terrain's not even. Okay, we're going to throw this thing back in object mode. And now we need a alpha tree branch so that we can actually make our textures. So I've done did a little search already and I've searched public public domain branch alpha texture and I clicked on this one and go to textures.com and the 1024 by 551 is free apparently I need to log in to download though so let me do that okay so I signed up for my free account and I went ahead and downloaded that so I can close this go ahead File Explorer downloads and I'm going to shrink this and just drag this out to the desktop and then close that back to Blender. Now we need ourselves a plane so that we can get our texture put on it. So I'm going to Shift A, Mesh, Plane, and I'm just going to hit 7 and move it over here. Scaled up and scaled on the X a little bit. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> Scale it that way on the X. And hit tab. And I'm going to put two loop cuts in it this way and one loop cut in it this way. That way I can grab these and move them up. Oh, I got proportional editing on. Turn that off. Move it up. Wrong button. Just to give it some bend. And then I'm going to grab these three vertex and turn proportional editing back on. Go into front view and rotate it. Um, if you're too big, you might not see the circle, so just scroll your mouse wheel till you can get it. And I'm just going to bend that thing and shade smooth it. Now we got to jump into shading. Create a new one. Control T to uh, get our node set up. Open. Desktop. Find our tree branch, put it on there. And it's going to look black for right now, but we need to add a couple nodes. So I'm going to move the material output node over. Shift A, search. Transparent BSDF, not translucent. And we're going to sit that right here and then I believe it's control alt 
right click drag nope <laughs> shift alt right click drag nope you know what <laughs> we need a uh, mix shader and we'll pop the mix shader in there we'll plug our transparent bsdf in there and our alpha to our factor in here And that's making a mess. Oh, this needs switched. That's good. And then go into our materials tab, scroll down, settings, and then the blend mode instead of being opaque, turn to uh, alpha blend. And that makes it transparent. So I'm going to jump over into UV editing and check out my UV here. And that looks fine. Now we can proceed to placing these on our tree here and there. I'm going to select my tree though and in my um, material properties click new and I'm just going to give it a brownish color so it doesn't look crazy and I'm going to turn the uh, turn the specular down on a tree and I'm also going to turn the specular down on where's it? No, it's at. You know, jump into shading and do it here. <laughs> Let's turn the specular down, turn the roughness up. That'll make it look better when we uh, put some lighting in here, which we're going to do right now. Um, if you don't have an HDRI, you could just make a, a plane, but I have HDRIs in my asset browser. So I'm going to go here and I've switched to my Polyhaven and my nature and we'll do a midday. And just pick pick a naturey one, something like that. There's a pond that work, and I just drag it and drop it, and that gives me my lighting. So I find this background kind of you know uh, distracting. So if you go up here to your render properties, and you scroll down to film, and open up film, you can turn the transparency on, and that'll get rid of all that background but you still keep the lighting so now that we have that set up we can go ahead and start placing this on our tree how we want it so I'm going to go in the front view and just move this guy up here and before I get all crazy doing this I am going to go back in edit mode grab these three vertex do a shift s and yeah, Shift S and do a cursor to select it. And then, you know, what? just grab that single vertex there and then do a Shift S cursor to select it. That puts the vertex, uh, the cursor right on the vertex. And then you can do a right click. Nope, go in object mode. Do a right click, set origin to 3D cursor. And that sets the origin to there. And then you can do a Shift C to put the origin back where it belongs. But now we can rotate this by individual origins. And that should, ro yep, that rotates it from the back of the tree limb there so we don't have troubles. I probably should put it in the corner because this thing's all goofy. <laughs> but, uh, matter of fact, I think I will. So I'm going to select that one. Shift S, cursor to selected, right click, set origin to 3D cursor. And then shift C to put it back. Now it'll rotate from that point, which is kind of where we want it. So I'm going to hit 7, hit G, move it over there, rotate it. Yeah, that's making it easier to control. Uh, it actually looks a little squished, so I'm going to scale it on a, on a Y a little bit. And then scale the whole thing down a little bit. And rotate it. And we can just place that where it needs to go. And I can turn my overlays off too to see where it's going. And to see how big it is and everything. And that's looking pretty good. And then if you want, 
you can uh, when you copy the next one you can go into the UV editing tab and hit A over here so that it selects everything and didn't do it S whoop, 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 whoop. before I did I copy it? Yeah I did. <laughs> do a S Y minus one and that'll flip it the other direction here. So now we have uh, two of them we can copy. That way we don't get the same look everywhere. So we'll just move this around and uh, rotate it. Make it look pretty good. Turn my overlays off so I can see where it's going. It's way too high, so I'll move it down. I mean, this isn't the best texture in the world. You could probably find a better one, but I mean, this this serves a purpose, and I'm just doing this for uh, example anyway. Oh, my uh, point of origin is in the wrong place now. <laughs> needs to be over here for this one um, and we can go ahead and do that now so shift s cursor to selected back in object mode right click set origin to 3d cursor shift c to reset the cursor now our um, backwards copy will rotate like it's supposed to because it was acting goofy actually going to select both of those that way I can copy them both at the same time and move them around so 7 50 we'll rotate them around stick them on this side you don't have to be in uh, rendered mode to do this actually better like this actually I'm going to select both of those, and I can, uh, I'm used to looking at this in the X with uh, no overlays on, but if, 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 it, if you can't tell what you're selecting, uh, you can turn it back on, but I know what I'm selecting. <laughs> I'll rotate these this way a little bit, a little bit more, move them up here. That's pretty good, and then I'm going to copy them, move them up, get them lined up, scale them down a hair so that they go where they need to. And I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this stuff. I'm just going to move stuff around and try to make it look like a tree. You guys can uh, play with this thing and adjust it and Move stuff around until you're happy with it, and it'll take you some time. And I'm going to go ahead and do that uh, off camera, and I'll come back when I'm done. I'm basically just going to be scaling these things, rotating them, and lining them up with each branch to make it look like a tree. Okay, so I got my tree in here. Uh, and I spent some time and just positioned a bunch of leaves how I wanted to position them. And that's not looking horrible. Uh, now we want to go ahead and texture our uh, our tree part. And before I do that, though, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna hit Control I and invert the selection, and we're gonna join all those together. So Control J. Oh, I didn't have one active. There we go. Control J. Now they're all active, and we need to put a solidify on these. So that way. When you get in second life you look from underneath it's not uh see through so modifiers tab add modifiers and we're going to do a solidify and we do not want to fill the rim and that should be fine just the way it is 
So I'm going to go ahead and apply that. Turn off my overlays. Yeah, it should be okay. Now we have some clipping here, but in uh, Second Life we can turn the alpha clipping off and it'll it'll take care of that. Okay, we got our top of the tree done. Now we need to unwrap this uh, base of the tree. So I'm just going to select the top and hide it. Grab this guy. And we're going to mark some seams here to uh, make our life a little easier. Uh, first thing we're going to do is delete some of this crap because we don't need none of these bottom faces. So we'll delete all those. That'll make it a little easier to unwrap that way. Uh, how do I want to do this? I think I'm just going to mark seams around each branch. To make my life easier. So. Luckily, I didn't make too many branches, so it's not too difficult to get a hold of. Get this one. I don't think I missed any of them. So that should do there. And we'll right click mark those seams real quick. Now I'm going to grab. I think I'm going to grab this whole edge loop here. It's going to cause us some mess, but after we bake it, I'll throw it in here and uh, straighten it out. So I'm going to just mark these edges so that when it unfolds, it'll fold out. That should be good. Right click mark seams. Now we need one up the side here, so I'm going to grab that one, that one, that one, and that one. And that'll unwrap the whole top, and then we need a seam going this way. And our crazy end piece here. Actually, instead of going across the bottom, I'm going to go across the top of these because you won't see them across the top. Select that, thank you. And I'll go ahead and mark seams now before I deselect everything by accident. Seams. One more here. And the top of our tree. Just grab these and mark seam. And I think I got them all. 
So all that should do a pretty decent unwrap. So jump over to UV editing. Turn my overlays back on. Hit A. U and unwrap. And that gives us a bunch of crazy shapes. And we want to try to align all these shapes up and down for the most part. So I'm just going to be grabbing islands and rotating and getting them fairly all the same direction. That's a mess. Let's see where that is. So, click that. Beard on number pad. We are, we got some something going on here. Oh, I don't have a top seam here. So we'll grab that seam, right click, mark seams. Make sure I ain't got no other screwy stuff. Everything else looks pretty good, so I'm just going to unwrap it again. That's better. I'm going to try UV Pack Island, see what happens. Not much better. So back to Island, select, turn our sink back off, hit A over here. And start rotating them again. Try to make them all the same direction. That way when we lay our texture on there, at least if the grain goes this way, it goes that way on all of them. That looks good. Now into the shading tab. Uh, with our tree selected, go to our node here and I'm going to hit uh, Control shift t because I have a PBR texture here that's uh, this. And I'm just going to select the nodes I need. And click here and it sets it all up for me and puts the texture on there. And then I can scale it accordingly with the texture coordinate node or the mapping node over here. So I'm just going to grab all those and scale it down until it looks like tree bark. That looks pretty good. Turn on rendering. Not too bad. It's got some issues here and there, but uh, I don't think you're going to notice. They're all running the way they need to run. Unhot our tree. That's looking pretty good. So I noticed that uh, bottom of the tree is a little straight down, so I went ahead and uh, selected all the little edges on the end of the each root and change my uh, pivot point to what I do medium point and just scale it out a little bit that way when we put a ground plane in uh, they won't come to abrupt stops they'll actually dent in a little bit and that also helps if the terrain's not level so we get a little angle there and I'm sure you guys maybe put a little more time in than I did with this root system, but yeah. So I'm actually going to keep this ground plane, move it down, because I'm going to do some lighting on this thing. Uh, I'm going to select my tree, and I done turned my camera off to de-render the top part of the tree and hide it. And I need to get the lighting on this thing better. Maybe mess with the color a little bit. Uh... But right now we're using a HDRI, and I'm actually going to kill that. So I'm going to go to Shading, and change my object to World. And I'm just going to kill this HDRI just by hitting this X. And that takes all the light out of our scene. Go back to Layout, and Shift A, Light. I'm going to do an Area Light, and I'm going to move it up. Scale it up real big. And crank the lighting up on it. Okay, we'll try that. 10,000. It's not getting much light at all, is it? I'm probably going to throw this plane on each scale it down. I still just don't have enough light. Alright, so let's go 20,000. That's better. Now scale it up. That's looking pretty good there. Maybe back this down to 15,000. 
Oh, I must have 200,000. Let's see here. Okay. Uh, 70,000. Just trying to get the light on it to where I like it. Uh, I'm actually going to copy this plane from front view and rotate it this way. And copy it, put it over here, rotate it back this way. Copy both of them. 50, right click, RZ 90. So now I got light from every direction here. And I think I'm going to select all four of those. So, where are they at? You and you. And do individual origins and scale them down. And then scale them out. That ain't working. Uh, go back to medium point and scale them out. I'm just just trying to uh, get the tree lit how I want it lit. Man, that's not looking too bad. I'm actually going to move them back in a little bit. Oops. And brighten this up a little bit because everything that comes in the second lap is a little bit dark. So I'm going to change that. And I'm actually going to change the color too. Um, so if I select my tree. Oh, I'm still in world. Good object. And under the... Why are you not selected? What are you? Oh, I mean, Cushion, we don't need that. Get rid of that. And in between the base color and the uh, principal BSDF, I'm going to do a RGB curves. Uh, so Shift A, um, search RGB, throw an RGB curves, drop it right in there, and zoom in on my tree. And I can actually change the color of this thing to be however I want it. So. Nerves. Trying to figure out what colors do do what here. And I'll just play with it until I got a color I like. That looks pretty good. I think I'm happy with that one. Now we can bake this guy. So come over here. Hit Q. Image texture. New. Name it. Tree bark. Bake. Cat socks is always on. Turn off the alpha. Click OK. Make sure our uh, Plane 2 is derendered, so this is a uh, free base, and this is free yeah, leave. Probably spelled that wrong. Can't spell, don't care to spell. So back to the bark. And go here to the rendering properties. Scroll down. Um, our render is 1024. Hmm, probably don't need that much. I'm going to turn it to 512. And come down to bake. And we'll go ahead and bake all that information. Yeah. 
and give it a second. And there's our bait. Zoom in on it. It's pretty darn grainy. So, because that baked all grainy, we are going to mess with our UV unwrap again. Uh, I've noticed when I do tree bark, it always likes to torture me with this grainy crap. So, we're going to separate this into two different parts to, uh, to texture it, or two different textures, just to give more texture space. So, I'm going to go into UV editing, and I am going to select the trunk and the trunk parts and we're just going to put those on their own UV so now I can use all the texture space of this so I'm going to grab them all and scale them up so this guy's using all of that and then try to arrange these on here the right buttons here and I'll do and then I'm gonna hit control I we'll just scale all these guys up just unwrap them that'll work that should do now, I'm going to go back into shading, and you know what, while I'm here, I'm just going to separate these. So, I'm going to hit P, Selection, and smack this little tube right here. Back in object mode, select those parts, hit this tube, and go back to shading. And, grab that one, I'm going to kill this and make a new one. Call it uh, trunk base bait. And grab the top parts and kill this one and call it uh, bend bait. Back to here. And bake it. See how that turned out. That still looks kind of grainy. Does it look on a tree? It looks good on the tree. You know what? We're going to try it, even though it's baking, baking grainy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead over here and Go to the three little bars, hit image, save as, desktop, trunk bake's fine, click save, uh, select the other parts, make sure your node's selected, select bake, see even those look grainy, that doesn't make any sense, but go ahead and save that one also. Save as, desktop and bake good, save. Okay. We are going to make some physics models and, whoa, 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 don't be moving stuff. Physics models and export this thing. So I'm going to go here. Sorry, I thought that was running. It was my uh, render view running. Uh, go into solid mode. Or uh, material preview. Unhide the trees, uh, leaves. We can hide this, hide all this stuff. And go ahead and export our oh, physics models, right? So I'm just going to make some cubes, uh, mesh cube. I'm just going to move it over here and I'm going to copy it uh, three times because we have three parts. And I'm going to grab my tree, grab my upper part of the tree and my leaves and check the size of this thing go into solid view here 
So it's a 23 meter tree. That's a bit big. So we're going to scale the whole damn thing down. Uh, that ought to be fine for import. So Q, all transforms, or you can go up here to object, apply, all transforms. And I have it set on my hot favorites, which is Q. Uh, file, export, collata. Operator precepts, SL, open sim static. I'm going to go on to desktop here. Tree DAE is fine. All that's fine. I'm going to uncheck copy and export collata. And now i got to find my giant cubes. There we are. And we need to export our three cubes. So select three cubes, file, export, collata. And I'm going to name it tree physics. Put it on desktop. And all that should be the same. And export. Now, jump into Second Life, uh, go to Build, Upload, Mesh Model, where are we at, Tree, nope, Tree Physics, Tree, and there's our tree, I did not check the normals, but they look like they're okay, uh, we'll turn this one to zero, go to Physics, choose one from File, Browse, and grab our Physics, and that puts those on there, Calculate Weights and Fees, Name it. Glass tree. Calculate weight speeds again. And upload. There's our teeny tiny tree. Let's see how bad it is if we scale this bad boy up. Ooh, 20 land impact. That's terrible. We could do some load models and stuff to uh, fix that up. Now we need to import our textures. Let's make it white first. Texture. White. 31 land impact that big. How big is that? Let's see. I mean, it's kind of a normal size tree. Probably scale it down a little bit. Yeah, that should be alright. So now, duck. <laughs> let's get our textures in here. Upload, image. Actually, I want to do bulk. Upload, bulk. And desktop, we need this one. And our two, two bakes. So this one and this one. And open. Yep. Upload. So we got our trunk. And then we've got, if we can find it, our limb. And then our leaves. And to stop the uh, clipping, which actually don't look bad, clipping's not horrible, but there is clipping. To stop the clipping, we go to Edit, Texture, Select Face, which would be this face, uh, and turn on, I think it's Alpha Masking, and Edit. I'm going to turn it transparent because I don't want to be bumping into the tree. Uh, or not band, transparent, uh, Phantom. Now I'll end up walking through the tree, but at least I'm not running into it, and that's fine. So I went ahead and um, selected this face, and I turned it back to alpha masking, and I cranked up my alpha cutoff to like 31, so let me put it back at zero. The zero had it black, but if you start cranking this up, as soon as you hit one, it does that, and then, uh, but there's little speckles and stuff, so I kept cranking it until those little speckles went away, and... I ended up liking it at 31, so I left it at 31. And there's still some little lines and stuff here and there, but overall it's not too bad.
So I was just showing Helena my fancy tree here and we noticed that the bottom is a little off color and I've done sunk this down into the ground uh, to make it look like it's supposed to. But the bottom was a little off color so if you go to select face and select that face and go to color you can bring this down and actually match the color up a little bit. So that matched that up. And you can also select the tree branches so select face and or not branches I'm sorry but uh, leaves if I can get them all here I think I'm missing one more so, there it is. so if we grab those we're gonna fix this this edge stuff here that's happening um, because the texture wasn't that nice so that little edge stuff and if we go here, uh, where it says horizontal scale and vertical scale, and we change that to uh, 9, well, no, it's not 9, it's 0 .9, 0 .9888, and the same with this one, 0 .9888. That will go ahead and uh, clean our tree up so we don't have all those little, little edge lines, and now the tree's perfect. So we have our tree, but it's still coming into SL a little high. So I went ahead and done a few things already. Uh, one thing I did was I separated all of these guys into four parts. So I took all my leaves and I methodically <laughs> chose them to try to make a fairly decent square shape out of each one of them. I also... Uh, That's, well, hold on. <laughs> also separated the trunk, so let me hide these, into four parts. So I've got the roots, i got the main trunk, I've got this part and that part, which gave me eight parts. Um, so I made eight cubes for a physics model, and I hit M, made a new collection, and named it Physics and then I just hid that. I did the same thing with the lights in the scenes. I just grabbed all the lights and put them in their own collection. And now we have the tree in all of its little parts. So we're going to lower the um, geometry of this tree so that it, we can get it in a little better. Uh, the separating the parts out also makes it come in a little less uh, land impact. So uh, we're going to take our whole tree here and make sure you have one of them selected at the bottom or whatever uh, highlighted and we're going to shift D and copy it and then we're going to hit M and make a new collection and we're going to call it LOD1 and click OK and now that's all in a collection so I'm going to hide that collection real quick and grab all of my tree parts and I'm going to hit M and make it into a main tree collection. So I have my main tree here. I'm just going to hide my main tree and unhide my load tree. And I'm going to select all my leaf parts. Now when you make these, when you when you separate these things out, you're trying to get a, a cube shape out of them. You want them to be as square as possible. So if you, if you hit the bounding box and look at it, um, bounding box is here. So you can see where the bounding box is. And you want to try to have that bounding box square and as you can. Um, you're not going to be able to all the time. But if you look at the bounding boxes of these guys, try to make them squarish and less rectangulish. Uh, this one I could have probably added to the trunk. But this way I can actually make the trunk uh, longer if I want to. So let me hide those again. So I'm going to select all my leaf parts. Oops. and go into edit mode and hit A go to selection down to select loops and click select boundary loop and what we're going to do is hit control I to invert the selection and that selects all the inside edges uh, now we're going to do X and dissolve edges so what that does it takes all the planes and makes them flat and gets rid of a 
bunch of geometry. Okay, we got all those flat. So now let's select them all again, if you deselected them. And we're just going to hide them. And we're going to work on these parts. All right, so I'm selecting the top of our tree here and go into edit mode. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is grab this guy here and all of its uh, buddies. And we're just going to delete those faces. That way we remove a bunch of geometry there. Um, on the end here, we are going to merge them at center on each one of them. And, sorry, screencast keys. Uh, you just select a face and you hit M at center. Then I'm going to go into vertex select mode and we're going to turn these limbs into triangles because right now they're all quads. So I'm going to grab these two and M at center. Grab those two and you can do a shift R to repeat. Grab those two, shift R to repeat. Oops. Shift R to repeat. And these two, shift R to repeat. Uh, we're going to take these three and we're going to send those down. So I'm going to do select that one first, then that one, and then do M at last. And M, select the two, shift R to repeat. Select those two, and shift R to repeat. And I think that's about as low poly as we can get this top piece without breaking it too much. Let's see, we got one more little vertex here. We can merge him over here. So, do I want to go that way or do I want to go the other way? Uh -huh. Yeah, we'll go that way. M at last. Ooh, let's try the other way. I think the other way would look nicer. So, this one, that one. M at last. Yeah, I like that better. And let's move on to the bottom. And we're pretty much going to do the same thing down here. So I'm going to select those four in you know, that center. Uh, this guy, I'm going to delete him all together. So we'll just did I get them all. Yep. X uh, vertices. Because it's not going to change the bounding box shape. So the bounding box is going to go this way and this way and that way. So it shouldn't change the bounding box shape. So let's undo that. Turn on bounds for that guy. And then if we delete them, the bounding box shouldn't change shape. And it didn't. So we know we're good there. Uh, merge those ones. Good. We can actually get rid of all of these. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fill this face. So select those two in F. And then I'm going to delete those two edge loops because... They're not going to change anything either. So X, uh, dissolve edges. Ooh, that, that's a bit much. We'll just do one of them. We'll do that one. X, dissolve edges. That's better. That way we keep our shape, but we don't. it don't go all crazy like it did. Uh, back to vertex. Grab those ones. Merge at center. Grab those ones. Merge at center. And then we can do these also. Merge at center. Those two merge at center. And those two merge at center. And we can take this one down also. M at last. Man, I think that's all we can clean up there. Okay, let's move on to our next part, which is our trunk. And this one, we don't have—I don't have any extra vertices there or anything. Um, if you have like an edge loop or something, you can uh, dissolve the edge loop. But mine's pretty much as simple as it can get. Uh, the bottom here, we got all kind of stuff we can do here. So all these flat edges, I can uh, go ahead and merge at center. So M at center, and select those two. Shift R. Click those two, shift R, those two, shift R. Them two, them two, those two, and those two. Whoop. Actually, that wouldn't hurt. <laughs> uh, shift R, whoops, and that's it. 
these ones I can do also. Might actually leave those for now. Get rid of those two. I don't think I want to do these two, but maybe. Nah, I think I am going to do all the edges. Uh, I'm also going to do these two. So, one at center, and we're going to do all these also, because you're not going to see them from far away. We're just looking to have a silhouette uh, and not completely break our tree. This one I'm going to go ahead and merge here. The rest of them I'm going to keep. Okay, so we got our load model uh, done. The other load models I'm going to just use uh, Second Life generated for. I just wanted this one so I could get it knocked down pretty good. Um, so go ahead and select all your parts and uh, export it. And this is the load model we're exporting. So file, export, Collada. And save it where you want to. Um, operator presets to static. And uncheck the copy there and just name it. Uh, load model or whatever. So tree uh, LOD1. And then export it. And I've already done that so I'm not going to export it. And then jump into Second Life. And we'll go to build. Upload, mesh model, and let's see, I have the tree, and then for the second load model, we're going to change from generated to load from file, browse, and find that load model you made, and mine's right here. So I put that load model on, and this is what it looks like, because it automatically changed to uh, medium. Then you go to physics models, and you should have um, eight cubes if you've separated it like I did. Yeah, from file. <laughs> Browse. Physics, physics, three. Yep. And there's all the physics models on it. Back to level of detail. I'm going to change the lowest one to zero. I'm going to uncheck this physics so I can see my tree again. I'm going to select low. And I'm going to turn this down one to, uh, well, it went to 95 for me. It may be different for you depending on how your tree's made. And name it uh, class 3 LOD. You don't have to name it that, but whatever you want to name it. Calculate weights and fees. 19 uh, with a land app impact of 4, but that's the server impact, so you can't get any lower. Our download is 3.6 and our physics are 2.8, so that's good. Upload. And drag out the class tree. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn this thing. Let's get close to it. So it, there we go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to object and turn a phantom. That way I don't knock myself off the platform here. <laughs> and go to stretch. And I'm going to watch my land impact so it's land impact four and i want it to be about 10. there's seven eight there's 10 and i might be able to get a little bigger than that and still stay at 10. let me try i'm just squeaking it up until it's 11. now let's squeak it back down there we go 10. and that's a decent sized tree and I'm happy with land impact. That's what I was shooting for the whole time I was building this. Put our textures on here. Um, I already uploaded those. They should be in here somewhere. Uh, trunk bake. Actually, we got to turn our tree white first. So, uh, good textures. Turn it white. And I can close that. And now I can just drop these on here. So, trunk bake. The limbs are going to be a pain in the butt to get to, but they should be this one. I think 
think I got them all. Nope, nope, there's some more. More limbs. There we go. And one more there. That's what happens when you break it up into a bunch of pieces. <laughs> uh, and then we got our... This one. Our leaves. That we can throw on here. I believe that's all of them. That's looking pretty good. And then we can also go in back in here and select our faces of our uh, leaves. So we should select our leaves. So that's all the faces of the leaves and go into where's that at? Texture. Instead of alpha blending, turn it to alpha mask and then turn this up to like 30. I don't know why it's not turning 30. 30, please. That ought to do. And there's our tree. So that's it for the tree. If you learned something and you enjoyed the video, go ahead and like and subscribe. And if you'd like to support me, please check out my Patreon. It really helps me out to uh, be able to make more of these videos in a more timely manner. And I will see you guys in the next one.